It can be a real challenge when you don't feel at home. I certainly felt like that a few years ago when a friend took me on a packed train in Cairo, having just fallen out with a ticket officer. As we pushed our way onto the train, I could already see police officers making their way down the stairs. I can tell you, I certainly didn't feel at home. But it can be even more of a challenge when we start to feel at home in a place that isn't. I was reading just a few minutes ago of um, Ettore Weber. He was an Italian tiger tamer, had been for years, into his 60s. He had become at home with these wild and dangerous, really untamable animals. And yet it proved not to be anything like home when four of them turned on him just last year, mauled him to death. Well, followers of Jesus, according to the Bible, especially here in the book of 1 Peter, are never at home here on earth. Uh, we're foreigners, aliens. Uh, Peter made that clear from the very opening as he addressed them as um, scattered exiles. And here he comes to that same notion again. In verse 11, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Now those verses were the focus of the previous devotion. But as we move on, we discover what it will mean to live like this. And what we find is that as we live as foreigners, as aliens, we are to do so under authority. And he says, the next verse, verse 13, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Parents or teachers, police officers or, or the judiciary, our own government. Yes, for those there, even Nero. Why? Well, that verse told us, didn't it? Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority. And they weren't to submit to Nero because of the quality of his character. I mean, he was a despot among despots. But what he did to Christians in those days is hard to even mention. And yet Peter can write to them and say, submit to his authority for the Lord's sake. Do it with your eyes on the Lord. He is your king and he is supreme over all. And because he has put those in authority, you acknowledge him by acknowledging them. Uh, and so he continues, uh, they are sent, verse 14, by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it's God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Uh, we're to give no one cause for accusation, even when we're treated unjustly. Well, how are we going to do that? How can we respect those who treat us unfairly? Well, he goes on, verse 16, live as free people. But don't use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. We've been freed from their condemnation, their control, because now we submit to the one in ultimate control. We have been freed from their condemnation to live as slaves of the living God. Uh, let me take you back to the playground. Uh, do you remember it? I mean, as a child, a little one. And in the midst of some rough and tumble and some, some argy-bargy, uh, one of the playground supervisors steps in and mistakenly thinks it's all your fault. And as you start to 
suffer the blame. As you're tempted to either crumple in tears or to start in, in very disrespectful terms, to have a tantrum and throw it all back in their face, you notice something that stops you. That supervisor who has authority over you in that playground has just treated you unfairly. But over their shoulder, you can see the head teacher. They see everything. They know what has happened. They're watching. And you can trust them. And you know, as you, in that moment, you choose, instead of to, to, to crumple in, in tears or to lash out in a tantrum, you choose to submit. You swallow it up for the sake of the one whose opinion really matters. Now, how wonderful that the Lord Jesus who is the judge of all, whose, whose judgment of us is supreme and perfect, whose judgment we will always fail, has considered us worthy because of his righteousness through his death on the cross, so that we can look to him and know true freedom and then submit to others out of reverence for him. And what will it mean in, in practical terms? Well, this is the final verse 17. Show proper respect to everyone. Everyone. Because everyone is made in God's image. And everyone is to see and hear the message of God's saving grace held out in the arms of of the one who died on the cross, so it could be. And so we show proper respect to all. We love the family of believers especially. We are to fear God and to honour the emperor. I wonder, as you and I seek to live out of reverence for the Lord today, which authorities will perhaps provoke and challenge us most? Well, as we seek to keep our eyes on the Lord, I wonder which of our brothers and sisters today may we be able to encourage as they perhaps bring to us the unfairness they feel by turning their eyes on the one who sees it all. Just think who God may have in store for you to be blessed, to be blessing today. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for showing us this truth this morning. Lord, when we are treated unfairly by those over us, would our eyes be so full of you, King of all, that we can submit to that authority, that we can honour the office, and that through that others in the playground of life will come to see and know and praise you too. Amen.